Three days after Penny's death, that was where Ian found himself falling into this group of survivors, just wondering, looking for someone to tell him to do something, only to find out that he was just looking for a break. Ian just needed a breather, a moment to recollect himself before facing the reality of his situation. It's a new world. Things are different now. Safety in numbers may seem like a sensible thing at a time like this, but surveying the scene of this group, Ian could easily tell that this was not survival. Just the idea of survival. A group that wouldn't last long in a world like this. The biggest sign of danger was the three men arguing over their options of what to do. One saying that they should go south where there are more people. The constable saying everyone should stay and wait for the authorities. The moment when somebody steps up and says something, the notch went up in noise. Greater chances of drawing more attention. Even after Ian suggested that they should keep moving and avoid bringing more attention to themselves. Even though everyone agreed, the three still went on. As I said, what you are now seeing is the idea of survival. It didn't take long before Ian started to experience a growing fear with this group. He could see it more clearly when looking at the other people. Like a predictable story. An elderly couple who will surely slow down the group. The mother and her two children were also not going the last. Knowing some idiot will die playing hero when trying to save them. And everyone just sitting around doing nothing as these three continue going on like teenagers. This is not a group. Ian can easily tell that all these people were just waiting to be herded out by someone who simply cannot go forward. Over half of them will not live more than two days. With what's happening in the world, these numbers will be a problem. And those three trying to lead will surely bring trouble on their heads. They never notice Ian leaving, except the mother. Maybe it was a shred of humanity. Ian tried warning her to leave the group with the boys. Even though she understood the dangers, the risks in staying, she still remained. For all he knows, they may have made it. Probably doing better than him right now. But there was a deep sadness to this. A regret that came with an understanding to it. What you just witnessed was something that can get people killed and the world turn red. And what makes this predictable story easier to understand. Everyone is going to die. Ian knew that if you wanted to survive, you have to keep moving forward. You're going to have to leave being like the people in the past and realize that you are now in the world that has no hope. After the world turned, after everything Ian witnessed, there are still some moments that gives a crippling dread to this group, especially when lingering thoughts start becoming a reality. When the world changed, humanity has been on the run, hiding in the darkest corners, clinging on to whatever hope or prayer to avoid the inevitable. You have to understand, hope is a foolish dream, and right now, he and the others are about to show you why hope is nothing more but a fatal horror. There is no hope. Only a group of people who are now realizing that it's only about staying alive and what they're willing to do to keep it that way. Since they found an army of cross traveling south through these mountains, nobody was prepared for this. 
Everyone assumed that they wouldn't venture through these parts due to the extreme temperatures. Ian thought it would be suicide for the cross to wander through these mountains. <laughs> suicide. After everything Ian saw, the things these cross do, how could he have been so fucking stupid to assume that the cross would not travel through these parts? Now with the cross on their trail, not sure if they're being hunted or not, moving forward was now essential. Nobody didn't want to say it, but they knew it was just a matter of time before the cross catches up to them. Should explain why everyone agreed, some reluctantly, that Pat would finally be useful by putting enough time and space between themselves and the cross. Ian couldn't deny the shameful feeling when seeing how everyone quickly agreed to leave Pat behind when he found him stealing a biscuit. Left with no supplies, no food, nothing to keep him warm from the freezing temperatures. Nobody will admit it, but being on the run, they were just waiting for Pat to fuck up again. An excuse in hopes of having something to tell themselves that there's still a shred of humanity within them. And with John and Ian holding down Pat as Ricky sliced the tendons on Pat's heels, now the only hope that Ian has is if Pat will be enough to keep the cross busy. Just enough time to push through this. When hearing Pat scream and swearing that he'll find them after turning as they walked off, Ian could see the dread growing within Anya. Kinda makes you wonder, what would have happened if Pat did not fuck up? If there truly is a difference between these people and the cross, Ian will not admit it, but in a world about survival, there is a reason why Anya is afraid. If you understand the human animal, what man is willing to do to survive, then this story should be very predictable to you. And why it's not just the cross that Anya should be fearing, especially after what happened with Pat. It's not sure if Pat was enough to keep the cross busy or not. The following days was not easier. With the cross being 20 miles away and still closing in, according to Harry, it was Anya that was making Ian feel more uneasy. Even though the group tried pushing forward and maintaining enough speed to outpace them, Ian couldn't help but strongly feel that Anya's frequent stops was going to be a problem. The sudden shock when hearing her yelp and moan, the urge to take off and flee was now growing. Oh yes, this story was now becoming more clear to Ian. The weight becoming more unbearable. Question is, how is Ian going to tell everyone about this story and how it's going to end? Every now and then, Ian would look around at the others and wonder, who else is feeling the pressure? When they wandered into a killing field, remnants of skeletons, closer examination you could see men and women who went crossed. Lord knows what they were doing here before they all died. Things kind of started to make sense of the scenery when they found a crashed plane nearby. Of course, it wasn't the cross that was steering the plane. If that was the case, you would be seeing a crater instead of signs of someone trying to land it. Regardless of what happened, whatever happened here, was something that happened a long time ago. And so far, it's the best place to rest, according to Ricky. Seeing how Anya was ready to have a child any moment now, according to him, there really isn't much of a choice. Ian knowing that they can't afford resting here, that waiting here will only bring the cross closer to them. He just couldn't shake away the sick feeling of what Ricky said. There really isn't much of a choice. Knowing what's happening, what's coming, how can he agree with that? There are other options. Question is, who else agrees to this? It didn't take long before Ian came forward and informed the others about their situation. Seeing how he was the one who was making the decisions and leading. He had to say it. He had to be the one who said that there are other options. Lord knows he didn't want to. But fuck. Can't keep going forward with conspiracy shit or sneaking around. It's something that needed to be said. The cross is 20 miles away from them. Probably less than that. And they are closing in. If they keep stopping like this and not moving forward... It's just a matter of time before they catch up. Even with Harry's rifle, the grenades, and the weapons they have, it won't be enough against those numbers. There is absolutely no way they can go up against what's coming their way. 
which is why Ian heavily suggests that they leave Anya and Mark behind. If possible, they'll set a rendezvous point for them to meet up. But there is no way they can survive if they choose to stay here. If they come, everyone is going to die. Yes, it's not something Ian wanted to think of. But regardless of Mark and Ricky's disgust with Ian's idea of abandoning a pregnant woman, that he would even think of such a thing, you have to look at the situation they're in. First off, nobody knew Anya was pregnant until she began showing the signs. It's not like anyone agreed to this. And not only that, nobody knows how long it will be before Anya has the child, or how long it will take before she fully recovers. If they stay here, with the cross coming their way, the only thing they have to keep them alive is a miracle, and obviously you can see that the world is empty of those. Even though Ricky's swearing that Anya is due for the child at this moment, it's still not enough to deny the fact that they're putting themselves in a dangerous situation over this. The fact is, there are people in this group who are telling themselves stories of salvation and a fucking kid, thinking that they're hard men whose hearts will melt when having a chance to protect the innocent. That is something else. Something from a film or a book. In case they haven't seen enough of this world, it's something that they don't get to have. All they get is the fucking cross. What that means is that any minute now, someone is going to say the word hope. And that's when they're truly fucked. Which is why Ian decided to put it to a vote. As to who wants to stay or who wants to leave. Even though Ian vowed that if the vote was against him, he would not try and leave. He would stay and be there for each and every person, like what they've been doing all along. But Mark was right. After Ian's little stunt, being the one suggesting to put his sister's life to a vote, there is no going back to normal. The only ones who voted to leave was Ian, Harry, and John. Ian lost. And as promised, Ian and everyone else stayed. That night, Anya went into labor. Ricky reckoned that he could perform the delivery. How the fuck can you bring a child into a world like this? For obvious reasons, things were different that night. Everyone kept to themselves, except Harry. All night, Harry tried working on Ian and John but they were not having it. Ian stood by his word of staying, but also knew that what he did earlier had already divided the group. Every fiber within him wanting to run off and save himself, even though he may have damaged the group, doomed everyone, Ian just could not bring himself into running off again. Stupid. Ian felt so fucking stupid. The following morning, everyone was anxiously waiting for the child. They were now on borrowed time, that unbearable feeling of clinging onto a miracle. Death was coming. It wasn't until John decided to check up on the situation, he too feeling the pressure. It was John who would be the one announcing that Anya and her child had died. Before they left, nobody said anything when Mark wanted to give his sister a burial. Everyone waited and kept moving on with nothing but the feelings, the feelings of hope. That was the moment when Ian knew that they were fucked. Yes.